If you'd like to learn how to tie this really beautiful and super effective dry fly, be sure to stay tuned. Hello once again folks, Fai Reisht here, welcome to another video from Gundog and Fly. And you saw the picture of that little fly there. Um, this is a fly that I use almost exclusively if I see trout rising, particularly so in the early part of the season. Now, maybe it's not the easiest fly in the world to tie because I'm using deer hair and a few other materials with the deer hair for beginners in particular is a great difficulty. But um, for anyone who has sort of any level of fly tying experience, it shouldn't be a big deal. I'd call it moderately difficult to tie but if you put in the effort for this fly you will find that it's well worth it it's a super fly i have yet to see a trout rising to large dark olives iron blues or anything similar to refuse this fly if correctly presented so um i'll show you what's required to tie it first of all and then we'll get to it Now the materials used to tie this fly are what I have available and um, if you don't have exactly what I have um, I will explain and tell you of some alternatives. So the first thing is the hook I'm using is a size 16 and these are Fasna uh, dry fly hooks. Um, any good quality size 16 dry fly hook will serve the same purpose it doesn't necessarily have to be Fasna. Now, Deer hair, as you can see, I've used quite a lot of the deer hair off of this, but there's more than enough here to tie several more flies. Um, cock the Leon for the tail. Again, you don't necessarily have to use that. Any bright colored hackle fibers will serve the same purpose. The tying silk I'm using here is important. Um, it's nano silk in gray. Now, the thread of necessity needs to be very strong. So this is a very strong thread, but there are alternative threads that will serve the same purpose also. And the wire I'm using is sort of wine colored wire made by hens, but again, if any wine colored wire will again serve the same purpose. Now the hackle I'm using for this fly is a Cree hackle. And this comes from this saddle here. Um, they're long feathers as you can see. Now you really need to have good quality hackles such as these to tie this fly. So they're the materials that are required and um, now I'll get to the tying. Okay, let's get to it. Now, Tying my tying thread or tying silk, if you want to call it that. And I'm just going to go down and then I'm going to come back up along until I'm back roughly a third of the way along the hook from the eye. And now I'm going to cut out a little piece of the deer hair here. Now I try to describe it best I can as sort of if you've ever used a small little diary they come with a little pencil and um, I like to describe this as like the diameter of a diary pencil now I suppose that's around what four or five millimeters now I'm going to put this in here into my hair stacker and that will level the ends of the deer hair So that's what you're looking for. Now this, I suppose, is the most difficult part of the tying of this fly, particularly for beginners or those who ha are not uh, used to using deer hair. It can, there can be all kinds of issues and problems with tying it in, but I'm going to show you how I tie it in, and this works just fine for me. So I'm 
roughly measuring the length of the deer hair against the shank of the hook. So I want it to be roughly the same length as the shank of the hook. And now I'm going to go around once, gently, twice gently. Oh, you can see the problems already, right? You can slip off once, twice, and on the third one I tighten down. Now I'm tightening down so that it will just hold the deer hair in place. Every turn I make from now on will go in that direction, getting tighter with each successive turn. So now what I'm doing is I'm really, after seven or eight turns in that direction, I'm really going to bring pressure to bear on this thread. And this is the reason why you need really strong thread, that it's able for the pressure and that it will actually cut the deer hair, as you can see here. Now, it cut off, you can see it just cut it like that. Now the reason for cutting it like that is if you cut it off with the scissors, what happens is you get a big lump of deer hair here, which takes from the overall shape of the fly. So now what I'm doing, going to do is I'm going to tidy up the wing. I'm just going to lift it vertically like this. And I'm going to tie tightly in front of it as many turns as it takes to get it to stand up vertically like that. And now I'm going to head back down along. Now, as you can see, there are a couple of little errant fibers here and there. They're not that important, but I'll snip them out anyway. Now, for my tail, the cock to be on fibers, take out three or four. And what I do is I make the tail slightly longer, but half again as long as the shank of the hook. Roughly like that. There we are. Now I'm going to cut that to just behind the wings. Now my wire, again, like I said, is sort of like uh, burgundy wine color wire. Tie that in. Make sure it's secure. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build sort of a tapered body with my grey tying thread. Now, next thing to do is just create a rib with that wire. two or three, maybe four open turns. And then I bring the wire to the front of the wing and then follow it with the thread. And follow with the thread again and again, that's three times and four times should be enough to hold it in place. Now I'm just gonna cut off that wire. There we are. Now, again, I'm just gonna hold the wing vertically it just in front of it here. Now I'm going to use tying my hackle. As I said, it's a Cree hackle. Now, grizzle will work just as well as Cree, but Cree just seems to match well with the colour of the deer hair. So I'm tying that in. Now there was one little thing I neglected to mention while I was describing the, um, the materials required just for the thorax of the fly, I have this little bit of sort of wine color dubbing, much the same color as the wire. And again, it doesn't matter what make it is or what material it's made from, it's just the color, overall color, this sort of winey, um, burgundy sort of color. So now back here, I'm going to build the thorax, like that, bring my thread to the front, and now I'm going to get one or two two possibly three turns of the hackle like two is usually an adequate if you use a good quality hackle such as this there we are five or six turns to secure it snip off the waist there 
now we're finished snip off my thread now the next thing to do is to just cut everything that's under the hook just cut it flush with the hook and there you have it folks that's um, my go-to fly for early season um, rising trout like I said and um, I have yet to see a trout that will refuse that fly um, if correctly presented. Now the size I've used is size 16 it will also work very well in a size 14 if you're fishing in high water or if you're fishing on a lake for lake olives this is an absolutely brilliant fly so that's it folks not that difficult tied up in a few minutes and uh, give it a go I'm quite sure that if you use it particularly on rivers like I said it'll also work on lakes but I, f I fish rivers almost exclusively and I've used this on many rivers and like I said I've yet to have a refusal provided it's presented properly. So Shana will OMSA enough a harje uh Gudion Kedor Ella Slong of